Hello and welcome to Learn GDX. We're going to be reviewing the intestinal permeability assessment. The intestinal permeability assessment looks at two non-metabolized sugars, lactulose and mannitol. The test measures the ability of these two sugar molecules to permeate the intestinal mucosa. The patient drinks a pre-measured amount of these two sugars in a solution. Insight into the degree of intestinal permeability as well as malabsorption is reflected in the levels of these two sugars measured in the urine sample collected over the next six hours. Under healthy conditions, the intestinal mucosa functions as a digestive absorptive organ for nutrients as well as a powerful immune and mechanical barrier against excessive absorption of bacteria, food antigens, and other macromolecules. With intestinal permeability, the mucosa is compromised, allowing a pathological increase in permeability. This allows for increased absorption into the bloodstream of antigens, inflammatory mediators, and other macromolecules. Malabsorption leads to a decrease in proper absorption of vital nutrients and subsequent malnutrition. In some cases, atrophic changes can lead to the seemingly paradoxical condition where there's malabsorption of essential nutrients along with increased permeability and absorption of pathogenic macromolecules. The intestinal permeability assessment looks at both intestinal permeability and malabsorption. The resulting leakage of luminal toxins and inflammatory mediators is associated with a number of chronic inflammatory autoimmune and functional disorders. In the case of autoimmune disease like celiac, first there's an environmental trigger, in this case the wheat or gluten, and then there's a genetic predisposition. Almost all patients with celiac harbor a gene for either HLA-DQ2 or HLA-DQ8. And finally, intestinal permeability, which allows for the antigens to move through to the underlying tissue and stimulate the immune system. Let's take a closer look at the results of an intestinal permeability assessment. We're assessing two things when looking at the results. One is intestinal permeability, and we assess this by the lactulose mannitol ratio. A ratio greater than 0.10, as we see with these findings, indicates severe intestinal permeability. An increased permeability to large molecules between the intestinal epithelial cells. These molecules increase the load on the body's detoxification system and may stimulate immune reactivity. The other thing we're assessing is malabsorption. This is assessed by the mannitol recovery percentage. If it's decreased, this indicates malabsorption. In this case, the mannitol recovery percentage is within reference range, indicating no malabsorption. For more information about intestinal permeability, link to product information where you'll find PDF files that you can print or save to your computer for future reference. To learn more, we encourage you to look at other modules we have available at Learn GDX. The modules here are specific to applying the intestinal permeability assessment in clinical practice. If you have any questions, please contact us by phone or email. If you're new to Genova Diagnostics, the Getting Started link will help you begin the process of opening an account. In addition to the materials presented in this learning module, our medical education support team is here to help you understand how to apply our testing to your clinical practice. Thanks for visiting Learn GDX.